Welcome to HP Tuner's GM Gen 3 training part 30. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to do our rescale feature. The rescale is going to be needed when we have a turbocharged engine that's running a variety of different boost levels. We're going to max out our spark timing load index to our table, which is fixed at 1.2 grams in our cylinder air mass. With a turbocharged or even a supercharged engine, we're going to be far eclipsing that amount of cylinder air mass registration. So we're not going to be able to give proper spark timing as the boost pressure keeps getting increased. In this situation, we would have one row to dictate what the spark timing is going to be from 8 pounds of boost, 10 pounds of boost, 20 pounds of boost. That is not going to be proper. We can find we can get into knock situations. We're going to have a compromise between making good power and keeping the engine safe. So I'm going to show you how to do the rescale feature going in and changing our injector flow rate size, also going in and rescaling our MAF and our speed density tables so that we can get our cylinder air mass registered properly and giving us more area in our spark timing tables to command the proper spark timing. Without further wait, let's jump into this video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at doing a rescale option in our Gen 3 applications that have a need to go beyond the 1.2 grams in our cylinder air mass for our spark timing table. So this is going to be if we have a force induction application, specifically a turbo application, we might have a variety of different boost levels that we're trying to achieve. And as we're going up in our boost levels, since we have a boost control, it's going to give us a couple different boost targets or boost levels we can go after. If we have our, our last spark timing row fixed at 1.2 grams, we're going to find that we can't properly characterize the spark timing. We might have too little timing or we might have too much timing depending on that boost level that we're after. So we need to perform a rescale to get things back in line. So I'm going to go over how to do that. It's actually really simple need to decide if you're going to do this before you start your calibration process because by going in and doing the rescale you're effectively going in and completely changing your math table or your VD, VE speed density table so this is something that you have to weigh in before you even start your calibration so if you're turbocharged and you have a variety of boost levels this is something you're basically going to have to do if you're supercharged this is going to be optional naturally aspirated you should never have to do this so Let's go and take a look at a sample here so we can get started just looking at some of the tables and discussing what we need to uh, look at here. So let's go to open um, under documents, HP tuners, logs and tunes and samples. I'm going to go down to the second option here, a 2002 Chevy Camaro P01. This will be sufficient to look at for the spark timing and just what we're trying to accomplish here for a rescale. All of the Gen 3 operating systems are going to be the exact same way. So what we find in this file is going to be applicable to pretty much any other Gen 3 operating system. So let's go into engine and we're going to move from general here into spark and then down into either the high or the low octane tables. Let's pop into our high octane table here. So within this table, we're going to find it's based on engine RPM here at the top. And then it's also based on our cylinder air mass. Cylinder air mass is part registration of the air mass coming into the engine, going through some math equations uh, real quick and it crunches out what this is going to be for the cylinder air mass. So essentially, as our air mass goes up, our load's going to go up, so we're going to find the cylinder air mass. We're going to be traversing up or down. So in vacuum, we're operating generally here at idle, um, something like 0.8 to 0.08 to 1.6, or even 0.2, depending on what kind of cam we have installed in the engine. We're going to be in this range. Driving around, we're going to be in the range usually from uh, anywhere from 0.08 if we're in D cell conditions, all the way up to something like 0.52, maybe even 0.56. That's going to be our normal cruising operating style area of spark timing. Once we get into full throttle on a naturally aspirated engine, we're going to find that we're usually here anywhere between 0.68 to about 0.8, maybe 0.84. That's going to be a typical wide open throttle area of operation. And then when we get into a force induction application, we're going to easily exceed this in our cylinder air mass because our air mass coming into the engine is going to be much higher. Now, if you're naturally aspirated with a really large displacement engine with a really large cam making a whole bunch of power, pulling in a lot of airflow or air mass into the engine, you're going to find that it could go here and get up to 1.2, but I haven't seen it get up that high on even large stroker motors with big cams. So force induction, um, supercharged, turbocharged, we're definitely going to be at this top portion of the table here. So as I was mentioning uh, just a few minutes ago in the beginning of the video, we're going to get into a situation where we're going to very easily start to hit this last break point at 1.2 grams for the spark mass of spark uh, representation. So we're going to find this last row here would essentially be able to... Uh, give us the spark timing that we need as our boost levels vary. Now the problem going, is going to be on a turbo application. If we have a boost target at eight pounds with a boost controller, external controller, and we have one at 12 pounds, we have one at 18 pounds, we have one at 22 pounds, as we're going up higher and higher in the boost, this spark timing here in this very last row isn't gonna be enough to characterize the variety of boost levels we're working with. 
If we're in a supercharged application, we're- Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.